finally we get to work on the ocean over here. I've uh, been waiting for this for a very long time. I have the fish already melted. I'm going to keep that there and we're going to continue. So some of the stuff that I'm going to be using to create the water or ocean effect over here is this. Water glue mixture, about 50-50. Varnish, uh, best thing to do is to get a high gloss water base varnish. If you end up using like an oil base, over time what ends up happening is that the water will actually start turning yellow and then it won't look very good. You're also going to need a range of different color paints. So I'm using acrylic paints over here and the colors that I'm using is True Blue, Sienna, Raw Sienna, Cayman Blue, Tropical Blue, Turquoise and Yellow. So these blues are going to be for my water and then for closer down to the beach area I don't really have any lighter brown than this. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to actually going to mix this brown with a little bit of yellow and possibly with a little bit of white just to lighten up the brown to get it to a closer color to the sand that I'm going to be using. And then to mix everything is actually a paint palette. Not bad from the dollar store. The main ingredient, that's right, toilet paper. <laughs> All right, so what you want is toilet paper that has least amount of texture in it. All right, so as you can see, this toilet paper does have texture. Some other toilet papers all have a lot more texture. Yeah, so this is what's gonna actually be making the waves. All right, let's start it. We are gonna start off by tearing apart the toilet paper. Now, I'm just gonna tear it into the squares that it comes with. I'm gonna make a nice stack here. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because it's gonna be a lot more manageable when I'm laying down the toilet paper. So let me go ahead, make a pile over here, and we'll get right back to it. Okay, so now that we made the pile, we're gonna have to clean up this area. So I'm gonna just take a brush and brush everything apart. Now we're ready. Okay, so take the 50-50 water mix and glue mix. Go ahead, start painting the glue. Now I'm gonna do sections and I'm not gonna try to get ahead of myself. So I'm just gonna start with this uh, rocky area over here. And yeah, so I'm gonna lay down this glue. All right, so now that we've added the glue, we're gonna go ahead and start using the toilet paper. So start applying your toilet paper and just put it down right down on top of the wet glue area. I'm gonna use a smaller brush here dipped with the water glue mix and I'm just gonna dab it right in there. Sorry about my hand being in the way. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna push the toilet paper right into the crevices of the rocks and uh, the excess toilet paper that you see sticking up over here, uh, just in about a second, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start tearing the toilet paper apart right there. So the fact that the toilet paper is already soaked, it's pretty easy to, to rip. So we're gonna do this side. Make sure everything is put down. I'm gonna do the other side. Uh, this piece right here, I'm gonna leave for a little bit later. Yeah, so I'm gonna tear this side up. Now with the leftover pieces, I am gonna reuse it. This little piece over here so yeah I'm just gonna go ahead add some more water glue mix and it's gonna push it back down and uh, this leftover scrap piece I'm gonna add it to the pile as well yeah so I'm gonna go ahead finish this area So now that everything is all soaked and I've put about four layers of toilet paper, now it's time to form the waves. Uh, all you're just doing is you're taking a stiff bristle brush and you're just gonna push everything forward just to form up the waves. All I'm just doing over here is I'm sculpting the waves how I'm gonna want them to, to look, working in all the areas. You just take your time, this, is gonna, this will benefit you in the long run. 
here's another angle. So once in a while, I'm going to have to add a little bit of the glue water mix, uh, just as the paper's getting dry, um, just to wet it up, make it a little bit more moist and more manageable to, to work with. Don't worry about if the, if the bottom of the ocean there it gets exposed. Remember, this is all going to be painted afterwards. So the, the whole idea for the toilet paper method is just so that you can make the ripples, the waves, and you just make it more lively. Here I'm going to be using a bigger brush just to help speed up the process. Alright, so now that we did that section, we're going to go and start with this section over here. So I already placed everything down, the, to the toilet paper. Um, now I'm just making the waves. Uh, what I did over here was I added the tetrapods into place so that way I know where the waves are going to be. Um, they're not glued down anything just yet. If you're going to have any boats, it's a good idea to put them in now too. So that way you can build up the wakes that the boats make. So this is a different angle over here so that you can see on how this method works really nice. Uh, just pushing up the toilet papers to, to build up the waves. You know, uh, I'm going to shine some light here to the side, create a shadow so that way you guys have a better view of this. And that's pretty much it for now. So I'm liking the way it looks. Worked out real nice. Okay, let's uh, keep on going. In the beach area, I have lowered the waves. So I just want this area to be a little bit calm. The little tiny waves that's going on over here, it's gonna about, about to crash into the beach, so. And before we can go ahead and paint, uh, like I said, we, we have to let it dry. So this is gonna take about maybe two days. Okay, so it's been uh, 48 hours now. Everything is rock solid. So let's start painting, All right? So that you see that I added some white, some brown. I'm gonna try to get this paint to the same color as the sand. looking good so far but it needs to get a little bit lighter so let me add a little bit of white mix this up and see how it goes all right let's double check again yeah it's looking good right now definitely just remember paint always dries a little bit lighter than what you have it right so now I'm just gonna start right at the edge of the beach and where the ocean meet so I'm gonna go ahead add some paint I'm gonna put paint right into the ocean type of area So now let's paint up the rest of it. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because just in case if I miss an area, at least you're not going to really see much of it because you know, of the, the, the base is almost the same color as the sand. For the ocean, the colors I'm going to be using are turquoise, tropical blue, peacock blue, and for the final one, it's going to be true blue. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to start from the shallow area, which is going to be a tropical blue. Oh, sorry, turquoise. Uh, I'm not going to be blending in the paints right now. I'm just going to directly put them on. Grab a dry paintbrush and just start blending in the colors together. Uh, you can see over here I'm trying to mix the, the lighter blue with the semi-dark blue. This is where things are going to look a lot better so you don't get that sharp uh, transition from one color to the next. What I'm trying to do over here, I'm trying to mimic white caps off the waves. Uh, so just as the waves are breaking, things start to become white and more foamy. 
and uh, yeah so that's what I'm doing so I'm starting off at the top of the waves and I'm pulling it back pulling the white paint back and then I uh, just wet my finger and just rub my finger across just to smudge the white acrylic paint around to, to dilute it and, you know, so far looking good so let's just continue to use this method on this corner over here I use the q-tip it's looking good all right now for the bigger waves over here I'm gonna have to add some more white caps or some more acrylic paint and just pull it back wet my finger and just blend everything together so it's looking really nice <laughs> It's been a couple of days now since I painted. Uh, this paint and everything has dried and it's rock solid, looking really good. So just before we go ahead and start putting the varnish on there, uh, what we're gonna do is this will be a good time to start putting things in the water that you want to stay there. So. As you can see, I've already started with installing the tetrapods. All I did was I grabbed straight Elmer's glue and I painted this area where I wanted to put the tetrapods. Placed them in the spots and just let the Elmer's glue dry and it's in there pretty good. It's rock solid. Well, mind you, I'm not cranking on it because guaranteed this will probably come off. For the beach area, I started off a little bit adding some sand. I didn't do the whole area because there's a set of stairs that I'm going to be building for the people to come down so that they can access the beach area. But uh, I did this over here because with the varnish, the, some of the varnishes actually I wanted to go up onto the sand give it a nice shine you know how the water goes up onto the beach and uh, so I figured I'd just do this and we'll be good to start on with the varnish I pulled the fish off over here and I'm preparing myself to do the varnish so I shook up the varnish and it's ready to go moist my brush I just put it underneath the tap so that the varnish could go into the brush okay so for the varnish we're actually gonna do like maybe four or five layers and in between a couple of those layers, I am going to put some glue just to give it some depth. But uh, just start painting it on. There's no special way to do this. As you can see, I'm painting onto the sand. Like I said, I want the water going up and going up to the beach a little bit. I'm gonna go back and forth because of the ripples of the water to try to get everywhere behind the waves, under the waves, in the waves. You don't want it too thick, right? I'm gonna plug away on this. All right, so what's happening over here on this area is as I was brushing in the, the varnish, it was actually taking away my white caps or the, the paint that I did for the tips of the waves. Not happy about that. So I'm just gonna do a very light coat, just enough to seal everything, seal the paint in, and then I can go in and brush. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry fully. Yeah. <laughs> and then Paint on a layer of Elmer's glue. So that way what it's gonna do, it's gonna give it some depth. Then once the Elmer's glue is finished, 
then we're gonna add like another three to four more layers of varnish to build it up and also at the same time to give it that super high gloss finish. It's gonna look super nice. All right, but for now, we wait. We're gonna add some glue to the mix. All right, so just take your paintbrush, take your glue. And we're just gonna paint it on. All right, that's it. Now we just wait till it dries so you can put another layer of varnish on it. The final product is amazing. This looks so realistic and so beautiful. As you can see, the inside of the fascia, I painted black just so that can separate the, the ocean that what's going on over here. So I ended up putting about six layers of varnish uh, as we get a bit of a drone view that's going on here. Uh, for this area over here, the white caps that got rubbed off from the first layer of varnish, after the first layer of varnish, uh, dried. I went ahead, repainted the white caps, and then went back again lightly with the second layer, and then just kept on going. So the tetrapods are in there nicely. Uh, everything's sparkling. Wow! Like I am super impressed on how well this turned out. So it was a very inexpensive way of creating some realistic-looking waves and water. Just outstanding. Very, very impressed with this. Okay, so that is it for the video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And until the next time, keep on modeling.